Good morning YouTube, welcome back to your financial independence. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about all about weed maps, ticker symbol map stock. So the only plug I got for this video is if that it, you enjoy this content, please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And now let's get on to the video. Okay, so I just went on Weed Maps Investor Relations. We're gonna go over a couple slides that are on their investor relations. I don't wanna go over the whole thing because like any of y'all could do that. 45 million people basically use this app and they have engagements on this app. Um, 13,000 orders placed a day on Weed Maps. So that's a, a lot of orders. Uh, think kind of like Grubhubs for that business, similar to that. And then, so this is, this is the thing about weed maps. They, a lot of people think they only have that side, the app side. Now we're going over to this whole other business model that I believe even has a lot more long-term growth than just the app itself. And especially it's a software as a service business too. So gross margins are insane. We'll get into that later too. Uh, so this is the more exciting biz business aspect in my opinion is the weed maps business. So right now they have four and a half thousand paying clients on the Weed Maps business, and it's a uh, night one point nine thousand active, but not even monetized right now in the Canadian market. Uh, if y'all want me to do a video about what I think of Weed Maps uh, in the Canadian market, the demonetization that happened uh, basically the beginning of twenty twenty one. Let me know and I'll do a video on that specifically because that's a huge topic that that will make a whole nother video about to go in depth. Um, so 50% of US retail license as paying clients across our extended US markets, 56% share across the US and Canadian uh, paying, active or paying or active clients. Now 3.8 thousand average monthly revenue uh, per client. So that's per business is paying them three, uh, $3,800 basically every month to use Weed Maps business. And then full box in a business personality. So think of what uh, Square offers the consumer, right? Uh, you have Square Banking, then you can get their uh, card readers. They do pro uh, POS systems. Uh, they do everything. Uh, point of sale systems, that's POS, my bad. Uh, so they offer the whole entire, you know, the CRM, the data, everything that you need for a business. They offer that in a business in a box. So it makes it super easy um, and they're super reliable through the Weed Maps business. And now one thing that I do want to touch on on the Weed Maps business and their whole software as a service model, you have other apps like Leafly is a pretty popular one. And you have like a couple of others that we're going to see in this video. But one thing all those companies don't have is the whole software as a service. They have an app. Some of them have delivery and stuff like that. Uh, not really like logistic software, but kind of just delivery a little bit. Um, that's one thing that no other company has right now. And Weed Maps has been in business and has been profitable, bottom line profitable for over a decade now. So this business has been making money. Uh, the growth trajectory is insane for this company and what it can achieve. So yeah, Weed Maps business, no other app right now has this product, which is what I believe makes this package right here, these two different business models so unique. So now we're going to go over of some of the, you know, client bases and revenues per client. So the average monthly revenue per client has grown from Q3 2020 to $3,238 to now almost $4,000 is 38.17 of Q3 of 2021, so the most recent quarter. Um, average monthly plan, paying clients has also increased from 35.90 to now 4,444. So, you know, they're growing their client base and they're also growing how much the clients themselves are paying. So that's two very good metrics whenever you're looking at this stock. Um, whenever, you know, the next 10Q gets released and stuff like that. Uh, that's really one of the most important things for this business model, especially their uh, software as a service, their SaaS business. So now let's go over how does this company grow? Like how, how does this become a 10 billion, let's say maybe $20 billion company? Um, you know, it's, it's insane how much growth potential this company has. So let's get into, you know, the factors that are going to make this company become a huge deal in my opinion so existing market growth new license uh basically any kind of new licensing any kind of new dispensaries open up 
uh, share penetration, and then deeper monetization. So that's what they're using right now. And now let's go on to the next one, new market expansion. So you, you, have, you have new states opening. So New Jersey, Connecticut, New York uh, will be issuing recreational license in 2022 to 2023. So that's three states right there of just nothing but growth, uh, you know, fast growth. And you still have, you know, that, that puts 38 states uh, that's medical or medicinal, I do believe, um, or me medical and recreational. I want to say the number is 38. So they still have a bunch of states that can legalize. And then the whole market in general, especially all of the states from medical going to recreational and furthering the TAM in this market, it's insane. Um, so yeah, Canada monetization, that's another way that they can grow. Uh, currently have about 50% Canada license on the weed map business on a trial basis right now. And like I said, it's kind of like a light switch. They're going to flip over monetization and it's going to start, you know, bringing in cash just from that. International, you have Mexico, Germany uh, will be passing cannabis reform in the near term. You also have um, other European countries. I think it's like Malta or something like that. Um, yeah, I think it, I want to say it's Malt, Malta. It's br basically right below Italy. They were the first country in the European market to fully recognize um, cannabis. So you have international growth on top of that. And then acquisitions and partnerships, kind of like what they've done with Sprouts. You know, there's so many um, acquisitions that they can make and they're um, a profitable company. So it doesn't hurt them that bad to make these acquisitions, especially right now as the companies are small. So you have uh, Spouts, Concurrent, uh, Canvia, uh, and this basically is going to scale the business model in the weed map business um, for fiscal year 2022. Then you have potential acquisitions that can also grow the company. And now let's say federal legalization or regulation takes effect. So now you have federal regulation will be engaged and to basically uh, take rate driven monetization and capture more GMV flowing from the weed maps marketplace. Then you have payments. This also opens up the door for federal reg regularization will also enable payment monetization in the United States. So now let's go over the year to date profit and loss summary on this business model. Um, as you can see on Q1 fiscal year 2021, so top left column, they have $41 million in revenue. And uh, yeah, so $47 million for next quarter, $51 million for Q3. And then year to date, um, that's about going to be 52% for the United States alone, going out to $135 million. And this is top line revenue. Now, one thing to look at how profitable, and this is one of the things that I thought that was the most important. Uh, if y'all saw my discussion post I posted on my channel, is uh, you know, you have 96% gross margins and then 20% adjusted EBITDA uh, margin rates. So extremely profit profitable business model. You have 96% gross profit. That's insane. That's definitely a lot of their software as a service. Um, and I wish they broke down more uh, in between the software as a service and the weed maps, you know, the app, actual app itself, what consumers use. Because uh, that would be very interesting to see. But yeah, 96%. Every once in a while, you, like you'll see in Q1, you have 95% uh, gross margin rate. But it usually stays pretty consistent at 96%, which is Insane. And once again, you have the adjusted EBITDA at the bottom uh, for the fiscal year, basically, is going to be $28 million. Uh, so that's $28 million, basically, earnings before tax, you know, all that good stuff. So that number is going to go down. But uh, yeah, they're still, bottom line, they're still a very profitable company. And that's one thing that differentiates this as any other SPACs in the market, because uh, this company is already profitable. Um, so yeah, very exciting company. And now one thing that I, I'll always love to point out is look at where the the big investors, look at what they're doing with a specific stock that you're looking at. Um, so you have, you know, share change and the percentages of 263% is how much extra shares that uh, 
what is that scenevest management llc so you have so many um and then 5.8 percent growth right here somebody sold eight percent of their stake right here you have new shareholders coming in people adding 15 percent extra to their position um and these are not small positions like at the very top you know somebody bought up 4.2 basically 4.2 million shares and obviously there's a reason why hedge funds buy in peter lynch once said um you know insiders or you know we can kind of throw this in with hedge funds too there's multiple reasons why you might sell a stock you know tax reasons you're trying to take money off the table there's only one reason why you buy a stock it's because you believe it's going to go up in the future you know that's why everybody's in the stock market is you're trying to make money um so you have six analysts right now with a 12 month forecast with a median of about 135 percent upside so 14 dollars and 50 cent uh, you have a low of 78 percent which coming out to 11 dollars and you have a high of two over 240 percent going up to 21 dollars so even the median price range right there that's still uh you know a double up from the share price right now it's even more than that you know 135 percent so now let's go over a little bit of the statistics of this stock and uh one thing i do want to point out right here first off with uh weed maps technology is the market cap is about 820 million so it's under a billion dollar market cap um, I don't believe Yahoo Finance is ever going to fix this. Uh, the market cap they're showing is about $405 million. So they're showing the Class A shares, um, but they also, there's about 68, more, 68 million more Class B shares, which is kind of like Class A shares, but they don't have uh, voting shares, so it doesn't get counted in with all that. So just so you know, basically take the market cap and basically double it from what yahoo uh, finance is saying so they need to fix that so it should be about 820 million so now let's go over the earning estimate so earning is going to be forecasted to go down a little bit um you know that can be a multitude of reasons i, I believe they're probably dialing in that they're going to be making a lot of acquisitions this year um securing a lot of growth and you can see that this company is going to be forecasted from um, this year 190 million to next year going out and hitting that 200 you know over 250 mil so 258.87 million dollars in top line revenue which is about a 36 percent growth rate year over year also i want to throw this out here as i know y'all have seen it before let's say a stock goes from 60 to 40 and all these uh, hedge funds and analysts they'll come out here and like start downgrading that usually gets the stock to bleed lower and lower um, same thing upside, you know, especially when a firm went, you know, went par parabolic and was running a lot. You had analysts and hedge funds coming out here. Uh, they were adjusting their price targets to 110 to 135. And there's, they adjust so much and they, they're always, you know, they're going with the flow of the stock. The stock's going up. They start raising their price targets. The stock goes down. They start cutting their price targets, lowering and lowering. So this is one thing and it stayed consistent. Y'all check this out. So the average, you know, $15 per share is what analysts are, uh, are rating this stock. But look at the dates over here to the right side. You have initiating coverage and you have all these people to, you know, outperform, overweight, buy, 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 overweight. So every single person that, you know, all these that started coverage on this stock, they haven't came out here and like, oh, the shares are, you know, $6 a share right now. You should sell at the low they're staying to their guidance like they're staying like hey this is an overweight this is a buy um this is an outperform the market rating so that's one thing you can look at that a lot of these analysts are very bullish on this stock and for good reason so now another thing i want to go ahead and point out here is the popularity of their app so they're number 14 in the medical market um and this is basically you know ios you know they're number 14 in their sector and then check this out 4.9 stars so literally almost a perfect rating and that's uh 215,000 people has reviewed this stock with a 4.9 star rating so that says a lot about the app and the company itself when you get a 4.9 percent or a 4.9 out of 5 star rating. So I hope you enjoyed this content. Please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment if you did like this overview. Once again, if you want to, comment down below if you're still watching this video. And uh, I can do a whole video breaking down the Canadian market 
uh, what, how, how this impacted weed maps, how this, you know, may have taken the stock price down because, you know, it slowed down revenue and stuff like that. And then we can go over, you know, what, what is the long term opportunity I see when they, you know, they remonetize in the Canadian growth and international growth with Mexico, potential Malta and stuff like that. But at this point, I'm just rambling on. So I hope you enjoy this content. Come back to my channel, you know, watch my videos. I uh, appreciate y'all viewing this one and catch me back on the next video.